Are you tweeting at the opening of the tweeting. show? No, now on G plus. Boom. Are you G plusing? I got all three of them done. All oh, right, dude, it stopped. This no, it's done. Well, now you got to bring us in. Hey, everybody, welcome back to The Grid Live because I screwed up Scott Kelby as he was starting the show. So, we're here this week. Mac Laskowski, Scott Kelby. Peace. Really? And you get on me when I don't have anything I'm to sorry, say. I'm distracted. I'm so distracted. Distracted. Get in the show. Come on, man. In the show. All right. We got a cool show. We got a very cool show. We got a very, very cool guest. Actually, yeah, she's kind of cool. I had lunch with her today, but anyway. We, well, uh, well, if she had lunch with you, Matt, there's, there's, there's a one in her There, There is a, yeah, there is a cool, there is a cool factor that you have to be there to get there. So anyway, all right, I'll let you take it over now. Do you want to start over? No, because I, I, really I wasn't happy. prepared to start the show. All right. Can you run the opening thing again? Can you run yeah. that opening? Run the little opening thing that says the grid and all. We'll just go ahead. We'll wait. I don't think they're going to run it. They'll run it. No. Eventually. There we go. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Scott Kelby here with Matt Kloskowski, and welcome to another live episode of The Grid. As I said, my name is Scott Kelby. This is Matt Kloskowski. I can't believe we just did that. Hey, anyway, we have a great show for you today. We have a very, very special in-studio guest. Stacey Pearsall is here. She is a hero among photographers mm -hmm. around the world. She is the author of a number of different books. Uh, she's won every award I think you can win as, as not just as a, a military photographer, but I think ever this since she got out of the military, just everybody's like... We love her. We love her, too. And she was uh, here at Kelby One today doing some interviews. And I, I got to stick my head in uh, while she was doing her interview today. I was taking some friends on a tour of the place. And we, we went into the control room and watched her. And we're like, I mean, we really oh, yeah, walked you have, in the yeah, middle. You, you want to like, stop and just sit there and watch the whole thing. I had to get them to leave. I got like, we should leave. They're taping, you know. <laughs> and they took a break and we came out of the set. But, but she's just a tremendous photographer and a terrific person. Well, she'll be our in-studio guest in a few minutes. Uh, but we want to start off by talking about Adobe. Adobe had huge news today, big, big, biggity news today. Now, I want to preface this news by saying, um, I, I saw some people's comments today when we said Adobe had this big live event today, and they're like, well, I thought Adobe was supposed to announce Creative Cloud features all the time, and then, but they had a big and not, and not have to wait for features, because right. that was so, one of the advantages. So I just want to say up front, Adobe has been releasing features all the time. And you know what it is? I actually talked to Adobe about this, because it, it's kind of a... It's kind of a weird thing about the creative cloud. When you're in the creative cloud, you get new features all the time. You're like, oh, you wake up one morning and it's like new features. But, but you don't know but, sometimes. But, but Yeah, and sometimes you don't know. Sometimes it helps if we tell you. But, but you don't always know. But this one, Adobe thought, we need to make a splash because they had all these new features that had kind of gathered up over time. Now, again, you didn't wait for a year to get these. You didn't wait 18 months because they did a big, just in December. December, they had a yeah, there was a big one. release in so, December. But I think at this point they thought, well, you know what? We need to tell people that are, are not. When you're in the, crowd, in the cloud, you, you see what's going on. When, when you're, you're outside not, the cloud, it seems kind of quiet, but it's because you're getting features. So, And I think it's fair to say that, that today was as big of a marketing event and an advertising event as it was just releasing features. I think it's an awareness and, event. Yeah. I think it, it, it's to let people know, look, they're adding all this cool new stuff. So, of course, now we are most in, interested in Photoshop. <laughs> okay. And Lightroom. And Lightroom, of course. And Lightroom. Lightroom. Right. So we're mostly interested in that stuff. So while they did do a ton of stuff on everything from Premiere, the in Premiere design, stuff. Illustrator. Yeah. Uh, anyway. All the yeah, video stuff, all the, the video all. stuff got but, some big But they added too. some very, very significant things to, to, to Photoshop. So Matt is going to tell you about our special resource center, we call it? It's the resource center, yeah. So. You know, it used to be a learning center. I like that name much better. Yeah, we, we kind of Let's start the show over. Roll that thing. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. So, uh, well, it was more resources than it was just, you yeah. know, I don't know. It's resourcey. I don't think people care. It's just, it's, it's, it's free videos that you guys get to go watch. So and what it we shows did, all the stuff. Yeah, so what we did is, uh, is, is we pulled everybody. I mean, we did some internally, but we also got a lot of people in the industry that specialize um, in a lot of the products out there. And we pulled together a resource center. There's something like 40-some videos yeah. um, that we put together with everything that, that that's new in the Creative Cloud that got released today. So you can check it out. It's over at kelby1.com 
slash cc hyphen hyphen resources. There it is. There it is. There's right. a resource where we got so all kinds of There's a of video videos. player there. You can scroll through the video player. There's a ton of videos. And here's a little tip for anybody watching this. If you click on one of those icons, it'll take you oh, down, 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 down. So there. if you click on like Premiere, it'll take you to the video player to the Premiere videos. Oh, that's amazing. That's <laughs> anyway, a feature unto itself. It took me a while to figure that one out. <laughs> anyway, so we put a bunch of videos there, all of everything from Premiere, Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, even Lightroom. I did a uh, – Lightroom didn't get – it's not a new version of Lightroom. No. It's a dot version. Uh, but what they did do is they updated Lightroom Mobile. So now and they added the star big ratings. Star ratings. Everybody was like, where's the star rating? They're Which, there now. I use pick flags, but I can understand there's a lot of too. people who use star ratings. I'm not a star rating person. Um, and then there's a uh, custom sword order. So it's Lightroom Mobile 1.1. And then they also released it for the iPhone. So we had it for the iPad. Now it's now there's there the iPhone version available. So, uh, but but there's a lot to, to look at. We 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 don't even have the time in the show to go through it all. But we did want to at least mention that we have this resource center for you. It's free. Go check it out. Kelby1.com/slash/resource. What is it? <laughs> Bring it back up again. Slash CC hyphen. There it is. Slash CC. We, we tried to make the name of it kind of complicated, so even we couldn't remember. <laughs> Kelby1.com slash CC dash resources, because people love typing a dash in a web address. Anyway, uh, uh, hey, you know what we are going to do in honor of the big Adobe event? Now, by the way, you can also go to adobe.com and watch the entire live keynote today. Right? Where they demo everything. Yeah, Where they demo everything. You know what? We, we didn't even mention all the app, like the, the iPad apps. There's oh, new yeah, iPad. Photoshop Mix. There's new, yeah, Photoshop Mix. Um, there's the other, the, the it's, Line it's, and Sketch. There you go, yep. Line, Line and, and sketch. sketch. So they also released, so this is pretty new for Adobe. They released the pen, that pen that they've been the working on. They, they, they intro it last year, but they actually released that today. So pretty neat stuff. In fact, that, that was, a, I, don't, I don't do like architectural drawings and renderings, but when I'm watching what they're doing, I'm like, that's pretty cool. It makes you like, wish it, you yeah, could. It makes me want to, but I, I don't think I will. All right. Anyway, in in um, in 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 honor honor of Adobe's big announcement, we are going to give away as one of our prizes today a full conference pass to Photoshop World Las Vegas. It's worth six hundred and ninety nine dollars because that's what it would cost if you could buy one. Six ninety nine. And we're going to be giving that away today. There it is. Vegas. It's coming up in 76 days, three hours, 48 minutes and 14 seconds. 13. 12. 12, 11. We have seven different learning tracks, Lightroom, Photoshop, Photoshop for photography, wedding photographer's track, all that stuff. It's all good, and you could win. And look at all these people that are going to be there. Unfortunately, Matt will dude, not I'm be. Not, am I not there? No, you're there. I, dude, I used to be, like, right up there with you. Yeah, I asked for you to be moved down. Dude, I did. There I got are, moved to the bottom right row. Yeah. I'm next to RC and Pete, though. You're lucky you're there at all. I know. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Uh, but that's the deal. We're also going to be giving away... Um, what else we Books. giving away? Dun, dun, dun. So, a photographer's, a photojournalist's field guide by Stacy. Also by Stacy, right here. Shooter. <laughs> Pete just made a gunshot sound. That's the kind of there. Combat from behind the from behind the camera. Anyway, we're gonna have Stacy on in just a few minutes, but uh, want to get that stuff out of the way. Uh, somebody asked a question that I will answer here on at the next break. Oh, well, you know what? I, I, I'll look it up on the break, but I just want to mention, uh, last week we did a show. It was last week, wasn't it? Because mm -hmm. I was in Nashville this week. Last week we did a free webcast uh, about my trip from Prague to Budapest, and we called it from Prague to Budapest. Anyway, but it is free online, and if you want to go watch it, this is one Creative. of the questions. So you can uh, you can go go to my blog, scottkelby.com, scroll back to last week, and you'll see I've embedded it right there on the thing. But I got great reviews. I, I was in Nashville this week doing a seminar, and so many people at Nashville watched it. I'm like, you're watching this? I didn't think anybody watched this. Like, no, they were great. We had a great crowd in Nashville. They were really, really super nice people. Cool. Anyway, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we, uh, we have Stacy joining us on the set. And uh, we're still celebrating Adobe Day. So uh, we'll see you guys right after the break. Don't go away. We're live right here on The Grid. Hey, Corey. We're going to that new pizza place across the street after work. You in? Yeah, I really wish I could, man. I'm under deadline with this book. I got to get it done. You're a machine, Corey. You're a machine. Well, you have no idea. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
from the robotic compositing mind of Corey Barger. Learn step-by-step -step Photoshop tricks, type effects, extracting, textures, Hollywood effects, and really badass 3D. Photoshop Down and Dirty Tricks for Designers, Volume 2. Your mind will be composited away. Hi everybody, we are back, Scott and Matt here, and we've been joined by our very special guest. Hi. Sorry. <laughs> no, no. I was gonna I was trying to build the what do you call it? Uh, excitement, build mm. something. I'm not very we need good music at music for that. Anyway, we're here with Stacy Pearsall. Stacy, thank you very much for being on the show. Thanks for having me. You know, we've been such such fans of your work and, and we've we've actually uh, shown your books before many times on the show and said terrible things about them. Right. No, no, we we have all been big fans. And you know what? I, I didn't get to talk to you right before we went on, but I met your husband at Sun and Fun Fly In. Yeah. What a really nice guy. I think so. He was really, really, I, I, he works for Nikon Professional Services, right? Yes, he And does. didn't he take the place of Bill Fortney? Yes, he did. Now, for those of you who know Bill Fortney from Corey, How are Kentucky, you, young how man? How are you, young man? Anyway, your husband took Bill's job. Bill retired. <laughs> they didn't fire Bill. Bill retired. You know what's interesting? I don't know. Do you, do you, do you met, have you ever met Bill? Absolutely. You know what's interesting about Bill? Every time you meet Bill, he always talks about he's on his, on his deathbed. <laughs> I've known Bill for like 20 years. I've known Bill forever. And every time you meet Bill, he's like, well, God willing, if I make it to this weekend. Every time if you say, Bill, you want to have lunch today? God willing, if I make it to lunch. Well, I'm, pl yeah. I'm plotting my husband's death. I really could use that insurance money to buy some more camera gear. So it's oh, holding yeah. out. Well, I'm uh, Awesome. Let's yeah. talk. Let's talk after the show. Well, I, that's just, <laughs> just kidding. Now, I love you, him. I love my husband. I won't kill him. So I got asked, did you really go to the shooting range before? Yes. Yes. I actually went. <laughs> so with, ask her where she was an hour before the show. Let, where were you an hour before the show? Let's ask where half the crew was at. We were at the firing range shooting off some guns. Killing paper, as some my husband guns. likes to say. Mm -hmm. Shoot them up. Yeah. Shoot them up. That's what you do down here in Florida. I shoot pictures and guns. That's what I do. All right. As long as you shoot, it doesn't really matter. Hey, do they uh, sell beer there. <laughs> I don't, I don't. They shouldn't really sell beer I, when you're shooting I guns. I think that's frowned upon in that establishment. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I think yeah. alcohol and guns. So how did you come back the way that you did? What do you mean? <laughs> oh, well, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, they obviously had to stop before they got back. Hey, uh, real quickly before we get on with Stacey, here, someone asked a question here. We are taking your questions and answers. If you have any questions for Stacey, of course, and you don't, you don't care about me and Matt. Someone asked, uh, could I give you the, the name of the photography store I visited in Prague? It was the coolest store. Photo Skoda was where I went. And the most helpful people, you know, it was weird though. I'm in Photo Skoda and like customers in the store are sneaking pictures of me. And finally I just stopped and posed. <laughs> I'd be like walking down the aisle, a woman would be over there like, click, click. And I'm like, I, I'll, I'll take a picture. Like, <laughs> it was weird. But um, anyway, Photo Skoda, great store, huge store. Like, really, really cool. Very, very nice people. I talked to some people that worked there. I actually bought a little bag and stuff. Cool. It was great. All right, so that's it. Photoscoda. And that's, uh, I, I wrote the, I have the name here. F-O-T-O-S-K-O-D-A. Photoscoda. All right. But it's Stay. like a weird S with like a... Yeah, it's so got it's a home lot or a, uh, yeah. a thing. I don't know. I don't know the names of any of these because there's none of them used in the English language. It's pretty neat. We have none. Zero. We'll just call it S. That's not an umlaut. I don't know what that is. I, we don't have flair. No. They have flair. That's it's good. flair. It's blingy. Yeah. So, Stacey, what you been up to? About five, seven. <laughs> I, think, I think I'm getting to that age where I'm it's starting to... It's going to be one of those, it's gonna be one of those shows, isn't it, Stacey? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry. Take us back to the beginning. <laughs> well, I was born once. Well, you know, I'm on, the, on this crazy breakneck tour with the Veterans Portrait Project. So. Well, I'm first, the, tell us about the Veterans Portrait Project. Oh, well, it really just started kind of small and it was just in my hometown and I was taking portraits of veterans during my recovery after I was um, wounded in Iraq in 2007. I really didn't see it going anywhere outside of my own VA hospital and then we did like a life-size exhibition at the hospital and it was so cool. The veterans really responded well to it and then the guys in Savannah found out and they asked me to come down there and then I went up to North Carolina and then it just got crazy. Spiraled. It did. It did. And so I, 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 wow, I did maybe, I think, 17 cities last fall from October wow. to December. And I'm finishing that up this year. So I've got, I think it's in total, like, supposed to be 34 cities altogether. Now, who commissions that? We're like, well, it originally just started me kind of developing with, you know, working with VAs or VFWs, American Legions across the U.S. and um, getting permission to go out there and, you know, set up my studio, 
and then just the veterans would come. Mm -hmm. If you build it, they will come. <laughs> and um, then, you know, USAA, which is uh, like a, an insurance banking firm sure. specifically for veterans, mm -hmm. uh, they they heard like as part of my recovery, I had to set goals, and and one of my goals was to photograph veterans in every state. And I had just offhandedly mentioned this to <laughs> to somebody, and there was somebody in the U uh, from USA that was there, like, "Wow, that's really awesome. We want to help you." And so they started um, helping me coordinate with VFWs and reach out to um, the folks within their sphere, which is thousands and thousands of people. And um, they've just been amazingly supportive in, in getting me to these locations and giving me the ability to reach veterans I wouldn't have otherwise. So. Now, for those of you who don't, who don't know Stacey's background, I just I want to jump to something you just said. So you were wounded in Iraq in 2007, because mm -hmm. a lot of times we'll have photographers who will write in and they'll say stuff like, man, I had to do this job this week and the air conditioning broke during the shoot. <laughs> yeah. And it was, oh my God, it was just a disaster. It was just misery. And then it's like, oh, and then the, the model showed up late. And we hear, we hear a lot of that kind of stuff. So um, can, can you take us back and just give us a little background? Now, I know that you were here doing full-on interviews yep. uh, for Kelby One and stuff. But, but so without spoiling that stuff, if you could just kind of, for those of you who, who aren't familiar with your work or, or why you are so unique in this, in this whole photography industry. Um, so you were, uh, you had a full-time job back then. <laughs> well, yeah, so kind of, I want to, I think what, what can start it is, it's a question that I never got to ask you, which is, what, what got you over there in the first place? Was it, were, were you in the military already? Were you a photographer that said I wanted, like, like how did that all start? Right, well, military came first, and the military trained me as a photographer, and so I went to like this really basic school, the Defense Information School at Fort Meade, Maryland, and all st still photographers in the Department of Defense go there, and they, you know, you get, taught on very basic things, f-stops, exposures, all that good stuff. But um, really where my, my true done learned it from the professionals within my career field, kind of like on-the-job training. And so I, I trained both in tactical um, military stuff, like, you know, shooting weapons and doing close quarters combat, tactical driving. I went to ground and water survival schools. I went to evasion and uh, series sounds, schools. Oh my gosh. That sounds nice. It was pretty awesome. I'm not going to lie. But then, you know, of course, advanced photography. And I, I went to Syracuse University. So I really got a really well-rounded education. Mm -hmm. um, how did I end up over there? So, uh, of course, as a combat photographer, you go where the combat is. Yeah. And that was my job. So I went to the front lines and I documented the guys who were doing the real work. People talk all the time, like, oh, you were such a hero. And I'm like, no, really, the heroes were in front of my camera. I was just lucky enough to have the tools to document it. Do, when, you're, when, when you're in the military first and, and you're going to go down that road, do, they, do, they, do you really go specify, like, I'm going to be combat photographer? Because, I mean, there's, there's a lot of different areas in the military that need photography. Yeah. So do you say, I'm going to be combat yeah, that's photographer? What that's what or do you, do you, or do, does that just get handed to you? Like, how does that happen? I'll do it. <laughs> well, I know, right? Um, when I applied for combat camera, which it was a special duty, and by that I mean you have to submit a portfolio and a package, and they look at the, the bigger person, like who you are, not only in uniform, but your abilities behind the weapon, your abilities behind the camera, and they take all of that into account. And you have to have at least four years in service at that point, so you have to have re-enlisted and showed commitment. And then they, and then they put you... Um, they look at you against all the other applicants and say, okay, are you the best fit? So when you come into the service and you're a basic still photographer, that's just what you are. Nine times out of ten, you're going to go to some base photo lab. You're going to document the daily grind, work for a public affairs, a small base paper. Mm -hmm. You're going to tell the Air Force story. Not that that isn't exciting because it's really pretty cool, but combat cameras like the tip of the spear, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Like That's where the fun is. And, well, I mean, I use that term loosely, but I thought it was an amazing assignment. I just like that phrase, tip of the spear. I've never heard that used before. Really? No, I like that. Tip of the spear. I forget where I've heard it, but I've... I like it. Yeah? It's All a good right. fit. Hey, one of our one of our viewers uh, has uh, dropped a little, just, just a little thought here, and I think it's nice. Uh, uh, William, um, excuse me, William, J. Michael Hill says, wonderful shots in that series, Stacy. I especially love the shots with the dogs. Yeah. Oh, well, I think we forget that um, not only are we have men and women in uniform fighting, but the dogs there, sir, um, military working dogs, are just as heroic. I mean, so I include them in the Veterans Portrait Project since they are, in my opinion, equally as important. So, I'm because I'm, I want to go back to the, the whole combat thing. Oh. So, so bad, like when... 
do you say I will like I want to be the combat? Like, is that like? Yeah, like, I'm wondering about like how did you? Because like, like you said, you you could be doing the standard stuff, but you wound up. Like, oh, I did. I did yeah, my did grind. Did you do I the mean, standard stuff, and then you got to there? I guess. Yeah, I, like, I want to get to how we how we got there. Yeah. I, okay. So. Uh, they started combining career fields. They would take the basic still photographers and try and um, make, they were downsizing the military. Mm -hmm. This is the Clinton administration. And so they were looking at jobs that were similar. And they started, you know, putting this job with this job. And they said, oh, okay, so basic still photographer and film processor. That sounds like it would be synonymous. So let's join those together. But the big difference is the film processing was five and a half inch IR film from U2 spy planes. So I went to the basic still photographer's course, had a follow-up of long roll processing, and I did. I ended up doing long roll processing for four years. Wow! All the while I was plotting my exit strategy, <laughs> which is—I um, I didn't even know the band U2 had spot right? planes. I'm still stuck on that, but go ahead. Um, you know what? It was really. <laughs> Pete, I got a laugh out of Pete. It never happens. Ah, uh, ah, uh, 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 Oh, but you know. The the time the the four years that I did spend in the um, in the dark room re really made me uh, appreciate the other side, yeah. getting back behind the camera. Because you know, at first I I wasn't necessarily the biggest fan of photography. Oddly enough, I wanted to be a graphics artist in the military. Oh, yeah. yeah, and I I was young and I just really wanted was biting out the bit to to get out and, and do my thing. And so I was like, whatever one opens up first, photography or graphics design and, and photography. Open wow. Up. So it wasn't like love at first sight. But yeah, again, so being in the lab really made me appreciate and value the artistry. Now, are you working on your, are you working on the, you know, because you said you had to submit a portfolio yeah. for that combat uh -huh. photography. Are you, were, are you working on that portfolio during this time too? Yes, and I was horrifying. It was, <laughs> oh, I was a terrible photographer. Awful. I can't even imagine that, but. Oh, ble oh please. If you can imagine the worst, that, that was pretty much me. Now, and that's not to say that I couldn't see things creatively, because, I mean, I was an artist. I, I like to draw. I love to paint, and I excelled at that, and I guess that's why I was drawn to graphics design. What I couldn't do was marry these two things, the technical side and the creative side. Like, I could see the creative, but then I would totally blow the exposure. I would do things that yeah. really should be second nature at that point, and I just wasn't having it. So I spent a lot of time, that four years, really to develop putting together the technical with the creative. So then I, I did a, one day you get a call and they're like, hey, we have an opening to be a combat photographer. Um, well, I saw this dude um, when I was stationed at Offutt, which was in nowhere in Nebraska. And um, sorry, Nebraskans, great state. <laughs> um, uh, Y'all are my thoughts and prayers with this tornado business though. I digress. But anyway, so I saw this guy and he was wearing a flight suit and he would look so cool and badass, like kind of like um, Maverick from Top Gun. And I'm like, I want to be you. And so he told me about Comet Camera. And, and I, so I just kept looking at positions if they were going to open up. And they were really coveted. There was only 50 positions. And there were so many talented, experienced combat photographers that home, what we yeah. call homesteaded. Like once they got there, they didn't leave, which yeah. I totally understand why. And um, I was stationed, I got stationed in England, and I was just, again, sitting there watching the cycles and, make, and seeing if there was a position. One opened, and I was like, woo! And me and about 50 other people really, really wanted the spot. I don't oh, know. No. Honestly, I don't know how many people I was competing against. I just know that they were very talented and probably 20 times more talented than me. So I, I did a lot of groveling, <laughs> and I was like, please, I, I, I'm re-enlisting. I really want to be a combat photographer, and I will go sleepless nights, I will grind my fingers down to the bone. I spent four years you. processing spot plane <laughs> yes. You owe me. <laughs> uh -uh. You owe me. But that's the thing about the military. They don't, they don't owe you anything. It's about service right, before self. And so um, I guess at that point, I, you know, it's like, okay, if I get it, I get it. It's supposed to be. Yeah. And then if I don't, then I guess I just have to keep working harder. Wow. So you got that one. I did. Wow. Yeah, I got accepted. And then 9-11 happened. And that changed everything. And then how long before you were in Iraq? Um, from the time I found out I was going or? No, like from, from, from where? Or yeah, so when now you got, you, now you got you, the you're, position. You're in the combat program. I reported January 2002. I, I deployed to Iraq in June 2003 for, for aerial missions. I reported in September 2003 for ground. 
For the aerial zone. missions, are you shooting plane to plane? Or are you shooting with a hole in the plane straight down? No, mainly these were um, air mobility operations. And what we were doing was taking supplies from Germany down to Baghdad and then back and then back again. So basically they were supply runs. Oh, okay. And I was just documenting those operations. And really, I mean, it seems uneventful, but that's such an underreported part of the mission, which was really critical at that point. Yeah, all the, I mean, all the things that, all the things that make the mission happen. Yeah, mm -hmm. schnitzel, and, and you know, <laughs> pretzels, mustard, right? Can't, can't live without that. Yeah. Well, and then, of course, bombs and guns and artillery. Oh, well, sure, if you, know. if you have room. But yeah, you're right. Yeah, all, the oh, things, yeah. all those things that make that mission happen that aren't necessarily on the front lines. Yep. Well, it has to get there somehow. It's like, <laughs> you don't show up and go, where are our tanks? Oh, they're over there, Earl. <laughs> 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 they just got there. <laughs> All right, so we've got a couple of questions here, too. Uh, Stacy, you will appreciate this. This, I don't know if this first one's a comment, but you'll appreciate this one. It says, Matt has a white watch. Yes, Matt Yes, has Matt does. So Stacy commented on that very <laughs> thing. Eddie As we were Teddy. quoting Top Gun today at lunchtime, that was a good Top Gun it's reference two and Goose Boys. But uh, yes, it's, it's, it's white. And so. I said, that's OK, Matt. White, white watches are for ladies. But I respect you. Anyway. That's OK. Johan, like Johan actually had an actual thing. So, uh, so I guess uh, Johan's asking the question: Are there restrictions on what yeah. you can and cannot shoot when you? I guess you're over there in in a combat role. No, there aren't restrictions. However, there's caveat. Uh, all the imagery is viewed and um, released. So, I can shoot whatever I want. That doesn't mean it's going to go out to the news wire. A lot of um, things to think about. Uh, we all remember those iconic images of the contractors that were were burned and they were hung from the bridge and you know there was an uproar and the fa how the family felt rightly so. I mean I put myself in that position. Would I want to see my husband on the front page of New York Times hang there? Now of course journalism we want to see the story and not change or you know we're just there to put information out, right? And then people collectively build their views based off those. But from a military photographer standpoint, I photographed everything. And of course, they're going to look at things critically. If it's going to be a threat. So if I take a picture of an entry control point, and that could, and then terrorists could study it and say, OK, here are the weak points. Well, oh, thank you, Sergeant Pearsall, for giving us this <laughs> wonderful image to yeah. use to you know, kill Americans. So of course, they're not going to release that. Uh, pictures of soldiers who were critically wounded or, or were killed. Those pictures would either not be released or delayed release until the family has been notified next of kin. And of course, you know, if, if you were in that position and, you know, something happened to you and your family of didn't course. know, of course, right. you know, so things like that. But, you know, I mean, I wasn't, they weren't like, don't shoot that. You can't shoot that. It was never like that. All right. So uh, a question here from uh, Scott King. So we know Scott. Uh, he asked, what are the day to day responsibilities for a combat photographer? I, I can speak to what mine were. Okay. Uh, so I had an area of operation, which we call an AOR, and my job was to seek out stories or operations that were newsworthy, uh, get attached to those units that were making that happen, and then go in and document it, you know, find the story myself. So there was a lot of independence in terms of, there wasn't anybody saying, okay, here's your story, here's, here's what, what I want you, you to come today. back you with. Right. You're, yeah, I didn't have a shot list. It wasn't like that. So it was purely journalistic. So we're, we're like when you said, okay, it looks like these guys are going to go do a something. Mm -hmm. Were they pretty cool about letting you come along or were they kind of sometimes like, eh, I don't know, maybe we don't want, we don't want a photographer there. I mean, how, how were they? Yeah. <laughs> well, um, you know what? Nine times out of 10, everybody was very open arms. But of course, um, here comes an Air Force girl asking an army unit to go with them. So what is, they're asking themselves, and rightly so, what is my training? What's my background? Is she gonna be a detriment? Is she gonna get in the way? Will she be a liability? Will she get someone killed? Then, wow, um, I'm not sure if we've ever worked with a girl before. Okay, this will be different. And that's really just a far, far sidebar. But then moreover, oh my God, this girl has a camera. If we do something wrong, it's going to be documented forever. We can get in a lot of trouble. Or we had a photographer with us before. They were idiots. This pictures got released, and we got in a lot of trouble, blah, blah, blah. Oh, we don't want you. So the, you know, they're jaded. And gosh, I can understand that. So you know, a lot of my time was spent earning and building trust. <laughs> and of course, getting to know their language and, and how they moved and how they talked. And um, you know, being, a, being a photographer is interesting. Really, I'm sorry. What? Is Paul? Sh no. Well, 
<laughs> Brad, who was, who was on vacation this week, <laughs> always writes something stupid with the word break. When it's time for us to take a break, he oh. writes something dumb. And, and I thought that Brad pretty much had the... Uh, the corner on corny, corny. stuff. Break we me just... off a piece of that. Kit Kat bar. Yeah, so that's what today's is. Break in big letters me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. Thank you, Pete. All right. For continuing that tradition. So I, 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 this is really good. This is really interesting because I could really see, though, on some level. We will take a break in a minute, I promise. How you they would be concerned about getting in trouble because... Nobody, number number one, nobody wants photographic evidence of them doing anything wrong. It could be a procedure. Mm-hmm. It could be like, that's not the way you kick open the door. That's, you know, whatever it is. I can understand. You're not wearing your safety beer. You yeah. Know? Like, like you're, you're not stuff. wearing your ear pro and your eye pro. Think, think about, think about any, I mean, anybody's job. Nobody, like, we all do our jobs well, but at the same, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Some of us do. <laughs> Thank you. Some of us don't. <laughs> no. <Wow>. Ouch. <laughs> no, but I mean, we all do. We we do our jobs well, but wow. at the same time, we don't want somebody over us watching every day. Yeah. You know, and I, I like I think back. It's I, the I, big brother factor. In yeah. A way. Like I, w- I was in before you know years. Like when I first got out of college, I was in sales and I, I sold construction equipment and I drive around the job sites. I, I was, I had, my numbers were always right there. Everything was always good. But it's like the day that my manager wanted to come out with me, uh. I was like, oh, crap. And I, I didn't have anything to hide. Like, I wasn't doing anything bad. My, everything was good. But it's like you still, so I, I can imagine on that level, when there's so much more going on, how people could could maybe not yeah, want yeah. to on the line. So. Well, I'm not going to blame them either. I mean, that's yeah. a, there's a lot of risks that they take because honestly, when I put the camera to my face, I'm completely blind and I'm trusting them implicitly with my life. And that is a risk factor. Like now they have one more person to watch over. Mm. Um, and of course, I, with my training and all that, I tried not to be a hindrance or an inhibitor. Like I wasn't there to drag everybody down. I was there to actually showcase the work that they were doing and share mm-hmm. their stories. And I think eventually, again, earning that trust, not like, demand. Yeah. that respect, but earning that trust and letting them know that I kind of know what I'm doing. And together we can work together and, and, and have a sort of, I hate this word, synergistic, um, you know, like <laughs> uni- <Check>. unity. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it was, it was really overall a really great experience working with them. But that's good because once you've been out with them once or twice and you've earned their trust, they go, okay. We've done this. I know that she's not here to make us look bad. I know she's not going to do something that... Well, and to get to, to piggyback off what you asked me earlier, it got to a point where I wasn't seeking out stories, but they were calling me and saying, hey, Sergeant, we got this thing coming up. You might be interested in it. It might be a really cool oh, story. Helpful. There might be something in it. So, oh, yeah. So and that's like, when you know you've like gotten to that point. Yeah, when they call yeah. you and say, hey, we're going out. Right. And, you know, I think that to me was one of the biggest praises I could ever get because it meant that I did my job professionally, that I was um, doing something right and that they wanted me with them versus like, oh, crap, here she comes again. Oh, that's good. You know. All right. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, more Stacy, And we got some giveaways coming up a little later. And uh, let's take a moment together to watch an ad. Scott Kelby here, uh, Mac Laskowski, and retired sergeant, staff sergeant? Staff sergeant. Staff sergeant Stacy Pearsall. Stacy, thank you for joining us today. This is cool. Thanks for having me. We're kind of in the middle of this uh, thing. We got some good, really good questions. So yeah, if, we if, did. if we can, we can go to some of these if you don't mind. <coughs> okay. um, so uh, this is a really good question by Alexandra. How do you deal with fear, like the fear of being in such dangerous environments and like kind of what do you say to yourself? What's your mental thing to mm-hmm. get through this? I, um, okay, this is going to be a strange analogy, but ride along with me. You're, you get in your car and you drive to work. 
can you remember how many cars you passed, how many stoplights you hit, how many, like it just becomes second nature, right? Because mm -hmm. you drive it so much, mm -hmm. right? So as a combat photographer, you become accustomed to the sights, the sounds, the smells, so much so that it just falls away, not to the point that you're not aware of it, because there is a heightened awareness when you're in these high-risk environments. But for me, it got to a point where I could just push all that away, because the more that I, that I thought about like death being right there, as you know, the more I accepted it, like, okay, here's an opportunity. If, if it happens, it happens. Because the more that I kept thinking about it, it would be fixating, and I could fixate only on that. So the sooner that I just accepted that, accepted the gunfire, accepted the risk, then I could concentrate on the photography. And when I put my camera to my face, it's kind of like blinders on a horse. And you just see the 70 millimeters you've got working in front of you. So you were, you were wounded in combat, mm -hmm. so I would have to say Twice, that. Twice, right? Twice, mm -hmm. was it? Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure that that was the scariest, or was there something other scarier than that? I think um, the biggest fear comes in um, when your friends get hurt, because ultimately it's the response of you're responsible for the man in front of you and the man, and the man behind you. Um, so there's this term in the military that says, I got your six. So you're worried about this person in front of you if you're <laughs> on a patrol and the person behind you has your six. Yeah. You know, and that's we watch each other's back. So my biggest fear always came from failing them and being a failure on that part, not, not me becoming injured. So I'd have to say looking back, it, the guys that got hurt or the guys that got killed, that was always more devastating than ever being yeah. injured. Wow. All right, we have a question from John Webb. John asks, do combat photographers use the same kind of gear we do? Is it just like a, a 1DX in camouflage colors, or does the military use different gear? Uh, so he, he, what's the difference? John, we have a DeLorean and a flux capacitor. <laughs> a flux capacitor. I'm kidding. Sorry. Bad, bad joke. Uh, no, we use the same gear. And, um, you know, my husband, bless his heart, says that gear goes to me to die. And it's very, very true. I... I, when I was downrange, I would bur burn through gear, like um, had a camera take some shrapnel and dropped another, like crushed a lens, um, which you can find out more about the, in the, in the uh, Trailblazing Women series because I go into all of that good stuff. But, um, yeah, I have the same gear, and, um, you know, I, I shot Nikon, and I ha always had two bodies on me, and I had a third spare in the rear in case, of course, I took a casualty with my equipment, which happens all the time. And, um, you know, and then I carried all the combat stuff I needed. So I had a medical kit. I had, um, I carried a pistol. And um, That was one of the questions is, did you carry a side? And a combat load of ammunition and anything I needed for the duration. Couple of frag of grenades, <laughs> flashbang. I left that to the, to the okay. hula guys. Yeah. Now, those guys were really good at what they did, and I didn't want to look like an idiot in front of them, so I just kind of stayed in my sphere with my camera and my pistol. Sometimes I would carry an M4. But, though, if one of them pissed you off, you had a pistol, right? I did, I You're did, You're just like, hey, yes. Yes. lieutenant, boom, right? What would, uh, what would happen, so when you know, you're on a mission, I, you know, there's a pre-briefing, and, and I assume all those different things, and you, you get out there, and so are you, do, do they kind of like go, and you're 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 just you're you're like is wait wait guys wait I fell on my keys. Is there a plan like you're following one person at a at a time? Like how does that work when 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 you get out there for? for no okay so, um you know like again I had a whole area of operation. Anybody watching the news this morning would have heard the city of Bakuba mentioned like a billion times because right now that's where the battle's happening in Iraq, and that was my last deployment. It's like. I woke up this morning and that was the first thing I heard on the news and the hair on the back of my neck rose up. So I was like right back there. Um, but that was my AOR. Bakuba and the outlying um, Diala province was basically the, my area. And so I would go from unit to unit and I would be attached with like a squad. And typically a squad could be five, six, could be eight guys mm -hmm. depending, um, and go out on a mission. And I would be with them for the duration of that particular mission. And then the next day I'd be with a different company, a different squad, a different platoon. I, just, I guess what I was getting at is when, when you're on the mission, are you like, like where, how are you falling into that place there? Do, are they kind of guiding you on where to be or are you just... You know, they go and you're kind of following them around because because I cause you mentioned earlier it's an acclamation yeah because you know, they they you know they don't want to see you as a liability mm -hmm. so it's like oh she's back there we got to worry about her and no then, you know. I knew my place yeah and again it's just 
you have to adapt really, really quickly. Each and every squad, each and every unit, um, they're so tight. They they trained months and months before they deployed, and they've been de deployed for a long time together. And so they've got their own like pan language, and they've got their own like anyway. So listening and trying to like understand. Pick up on that. Yeah, and then just really, really fast know what your role is. And then, you know, you talk to the squad leader, and you say, okay, how do you do things? Can you give me a rundown of what you do? And then how am I going to be um, the the best possible um, place to get these shots, I, you know, I tried to make my problem their problem so that it wasn't a problem. So I need these pictures. I want to make sure I get this, this, these pictures of you. Where do you want me? So sometimes I played the role of the shotgun breach. So I would go up and I would shoot the lock and then the guys would go and I'd be like third or fourth in what we call the stack. Uh, you know, and then we'd clear the house and I would get my pictures. Others would have me at the very, that, very back. Was that scary as anything, clearing a house? No, because I had really highly trained infantrymen who knew what the hell they were doing. Yeah. They, would, they would not be enough highly trained infantrymen. <laughs> we're going to send 70 guys in this room. I'm not going. I trusted them, yeah. and they were amazing human beings. And, and like I said, oh, silence your cell phones, please. It wasn't me. Just kidding. Can't be me. Gosh, I, I can't believe no, you did my, that. Mine's on mute. Wasn't me. Look at it. Mute. White watch. I don't know. Mute. White watch. It's, it's, the guy, it's always the guy with the white watch, right? Hey, white watch. Mom, hey, my, mute. This white watch gets a lot of play on the it's show. It's got to be you. Um, anyway, I forgot what we were talking about, but that was Oh, it was you. It, it was, was you. not me. You it just turned it off. not me. You just I, went Dude, you guys, I don't know what you guys are talking about. Somebody on the set had it. Mm -hmm. Dances with white watch. All right, RC's, uh, RC's Do asking a question. Do we have another question? question so RC has a question, and they always go to the top. Okay, <laughs> RC. So, uh, RC, are the skills as a combat photographer something that a non-military person can use to assist help get them better at their photography? Absolutely. Uh, you know, one would think um, being under that sort of duress and that high speed of action and um, that stress level that it would just be a lot faster to just kind of move around haphazardly and like just spray and pray something turns out. But I, I think in these sort of situations, it's always best to act like a sniper and, and think ahead of where the action is going. Get there and be deliberate in your photography because you could chase action all day. But it's another thing to get out in front of it and actually yeah. document it. And I think that mentality in, in being ahead of everything, whether you're a portrait photographer or a wedding photographer or an event, you know, these concepts are critical regardless of what type of it's genre a skill you're to develop. It yeah, is. no matter what mm -hmm. what what you're in. And I assume in 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 that business as well as any other business, the people that do what you said which is not just follow it and, and try to catch it and, and, you know, like you said, spray and pray, but the people that get good and anticipate it in any business are the mm. ones that really succeed. Yep. Mm -hmm. More questions for Stacy. Uh, Greg Chen asks, any additional hardships being a female combat photographer from the view of the Islamic population, uh, I guess when you're over in Iraq? Well, that's a really great question. And I... I um, I have a lot of respect for other cultures, and of course, being in their country, respecting their cultural um, uh, well practices, and knowing, you know, my role. And okay, so I was a combat photographer. That doesn't mean I'm an aggressor. So I, and to burst your bubble, um, sorry, Greg, but um, when I was in uniform, I looked totally androgynous. Most <laughs> times, people didn't even Helmet know. And everything. Yeah. They didn't know I was a woman until I actually opened my mouth, if I chose to do that. Now, if I just stepped back and I had my camera in my hand and I was quiet, they wouldn't have known any better. Uh, what was great is I would be brought into a room full of Iraqi women. And of course, the men couldn't necessarily be in the room alone with these women. That's uh, against their culture. And so I would go in there, and they would be really fearful um, until I was like, hey, guys. And they're like, whoa, this is awesome. <laughs> and then so I'd have a translator, and we talk. I'd talk to the ladies. And so on one hand, it, 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 it was never a hindrance that way. And it was all, I mean, I always had a benefit that I could talk to the women and I had, I could touch the women and really relate yeah. to them on a different level. And I guess I never looked at my gender like that negatively. Oh, great. Uh, how did you manage multitasking, firing frames at the same time, making sure you're safe and undercover? That's a question from Gabriel WH or Gabriel. <laughs> uh, Oh, that's an interesting. Way. Well, firing frames. That's an interesting way of uh, well, phrasing. Yeah. yeah, it is. Well, I think it kind of, kind of is the theme today. Okay. Well, 
you're, I, I found that I was never going to get really good images hiding. So I, I never really took cover unless it was dire. And um, again, it comes down to risk. Unless everybody else around you is taking cover, then. Right, right. So if, if they're out, I'm out. And um, if they're taking cover, I'm right there with them. What so, was the riskiest thing you've ever done? Like where you thought, I can't believe I should not be doing this. I'm taking pictures because I know I'm going to get a great shot, but this is not good. Standing out in the, uh, um, <laughs> uh, somewhere. Okay, I was wearing a, a helmet with a communications cord, which I had taken my Kevlar, which is my, my cover, my, uh, my proper helmet. I'd taken it off to put this other helmet on and um, ran out to help an injured guy and forgot I had that on and got taken off my feet. So I took it off and threw it back into the truck, and then I realized I you was... You taken off your feet? Yeah. And I realized I was bareheaded in the middle of a firefight thinking, that was probably not the really best decision <laughs> at this point in time. But. And that's, I mean, to... I, you know, I hate to, to say, go watch the interview, but when this interview comes out, that story is in there. Yeah, I talked right. to and, I talked to Mia a bit about it. So and that's you know mm -hmm. it's that, that just that whole moment is 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 pretty impactful too. Mm. So you mentioned you talked to Mia. So you're actually here uh, here today doing a series with Mia McCormick. Yep. That is on basically pioneer, pioneering women in photography, and mm -hmm. she's talking to to female photographers who have broken the mold. And I think you certainly fit the case. And but I, I as as interesting as what's happened to you when you were when you were in the service. Uh, I think you've done a lot with it afterwards. I think that you've done a lot for women in photography. I think that's probably why. You know, you were such a perfect person for that, that pioneering thing was because you've opened a lot of doors. And I, I don't know how many of us even thought about how many women combat photographers were out there. Yeah. Well, it's so humbling um, considering that I have so many women that I look up to that I feel have really blazed the, the path. And, and to be singled out like that, I just feel like I don't deserve it. <laughs> I mean, it was really great talking to me. And, um, you know, I saw Deanne last night, Deanne Fitzmorris, and she was on the show, mm -hmm. um, Lou Freeman. And I'm just really excited to hear their stories. I guess I get tired of hearing myself talk, so <laughs> I'm I'm really looking forward. Hey, to can I say something? No, I've done in interviews, you know, with with Mia. She's good, isn't she? She's excellent. She is. Yeah. She is just. She gets stuff out of you like you just can't believe. I know she made me cry. You can hear the. You can hear my tears on the roof <laughs> right now. There, yeah, it's raining in Florida. It's Surprise. raining men. Oh, <laughs> with white watches, it's, it's raining, raining men. men. I threw a harmony part in. Sorry, yeah, I'm sorry. Reading, I was reading the oh, questions. Oh, okay, sorry. All right. All right. So uh, we, we answered the question from Simon uh, uh, Simon Patel I asked her about what kind of photo as a military fighter would you not would you not take or not order? You you shot everything, and yeah. basically the photo editors for the military decided which ones got disseminated and or when they got disseminated. Yes. Mm -hmm. But you just basically you didn't have any restrictions on what you could shoot. No. Uh, there's a question from Scott King. Scott King is very uh, questiony today. He's questionable, Question. is what I would say. Okay. Uh, Scott asked, who owns the right to all the photos you took when you're in the service? Do you retain the copyright or do they belong to the government because it was more of a work for hire situation? This will blow your mind. you know who owns it? You. Taxpayers. And you and her and him and her and him. Okay, Pete does not pay taxes. Pete, he Pete. has never paid taxes. Pete. I, I take you back. Oh, my gosh. This just went to a whole level, level of depravity. Okay, I'm so glad that there's not a camera. Can I tell you something? The only reason why this show is still on the air is because there's not a camera on Pete. Pete does suggestive things. He gesticulates. <laughs> he masticates. He does horrible things over there all the time. Department of Defense imagery is actually um, public domain. It is public domain. It right? is public domain, yes. Uh, now, the images that are not for public release, um, like f that are for official use only or that are classified secret or top secret, uh, of course, you'd have to go through the, the channels of requesting that as um, the Freedom of Information Act. So, um, And some news agencies do that, but um, most of them are released to the public. They're open to the public, and each and every taxpayer owns it. All right, and uh, there's a, a question here from Alexandra. She's asking, uh, where would you send the images and how? I imagine there's no post-processing in that circumstance. So yeah. you're, you're not popping open a laptop. No, well, uh, well okay, so I would, 
I would document images depending on the length of the mission. I would either bring a laptop with me and uh, a trans, like a satellite transmission, and do that in the field. But if I would try to actually wait till I got back to the forward operating base, which is a more built-up location. That so had more like a Marriott or a Hilton. <laughs> oh gosh, I wish. Um, more like rusted-out tents and some dirt floor. But um, no, I'm, See, I'm only kidding. Because we'll photographers go, man. I I had to go all the way back to my hotel to transmit the images from the golf match today. And that wire. Like, wireless connection the wireless was wasn't very good mm. and it was like oh god the stories are they're heartbreaking they're just heartbreaking well i think you know we we go out on ops and you're dog tired when you when you get done you carried 80 pounds of gear all day and um is that what it was 80 pounds mm -hmm, 80 pounds that's your camera gear and your pistol yeah and medical ammo everything, and medical kit everything oh. yeah um, and, and then if you don't if you go on a longer op that's three or four days of course you're going to have a rucksack with whatever you're bringing with you but um you know you come back off the op the guys would be going and they'd clean their weapons do reload and get a nap and we'd have to finish downloading and have the stuff captioned and then released and then wait to the transmission to make sure and then get a verification and by that time you're ready for your next stop so talk about going for like 10 days straight maybe how many years did you do the combat part of your career S it came out to six six years six years wow yeah but you loved it, didn't you? Oh, yeah. You can tell. You can tell yeah. just by talking to you, you're like... I miss it a lot. I yeah. mean, there's not a day that I don't regret having that part of and my so career. And so was it getting wounded that, that you felt was that, that kind of just ended the career? Well, I, I don't feel it was. It was what ended my career. It was what ended it. Mm -hmm. And so I, I don't want to spoil it because I want people to be able to hear all that. Home. Do you, you go into that story in, in the interview and all, right? Yes. All right, so I don't want to spoil that to you today. Uh, of course, we've got a, a question... <laughs> Breakfast, the most important meal of the day. No, no, it's break. They're Fast great. Where's the best place to buy your books, Stacy? Oh. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't you see that one coming. that, did you? <laughs> oh, so, um, you know, Stacy Um You can find my website. If you, I mean, Google me. Doesn't that sound so pretentious? Google her. Well, uh, Amazon probably sells your books, right? Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Um, Barnes and Noble. You can probably Barnes find it on eBay. Um, yeah, so they're out there. And, um, and what's your uh, website? Stacy, we pulled it up on screen. Yeah, you had, right? it, um, you had it. Up. There, there we go. go. There we go. Dun dun dun. Oh boy. Um, hey, can we hit portfolio while we're there? Just just look at a couple of images before we take the break. I know they're dying to take a break, but we, we don't have very long left in the show. So which one should we go to? Well, I don't know. I, I kind of like all of them. Um, <laughs> How about editorial? Yeah, editorial's fun. So click over to the right. And There's just um, a little you arrow can, up the top. On the upper left hand, you can go to the thumb, thumbnails, or you can just scroll through them. Just whatever through. you feel like. Whatever wow. you like. And that's yep. taken from the... Four Seasons? You were staying at the Four Seasons? Um, actually, that was in the Hamptons. Oh, the Hamptons are very nice that yeah. time of year. Mm -hmm. These are great. Thank you. Look at that one. I've seen that one before, but it's a great shot. Bum, 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 bum. You know what? It looks like it was scary. I know that you're you're cool with it, but I'm just not that kind of guy. I'm just like, I would be like, tell you what, I'll stay here on the base. You bring them back and I'll do the retouching. Of course, they're <laughs> not really any retouching, but I would introduce some. More like that. Bullet holes. That was pretty fun. Rock oh, can baseball. We go back? Can we go back to that? That's in 2003. Those are bullet holes? Mm -hmm. Can you see it? Yeah. It's got to be nice to sleep in a place that, you know, has been shot up and <laughs> could be shot up again at any time. Yep. Get shot in your sleep. I got to tell you, you're, you're pretty brave. No, those guys are brave. I just was along no. for the ride. Yeah, but I know, you know what, though? Those guys, like you said, they're really highly trained. They're, That's the know, roughest part they're, about they're deployment training. They're a cohesive thing. Running but you out know of toilet what? Paper? I would feel a whole lot different if I was out there with like an M16 or something. Versus a, a, a Nikon D2X. So this picture is really interesting, actually. Um, you know, I did a lot. Of, I was an aerial combat photographer, so um, I got to wear a flight suit and fly in really cool airframes. And this was from a, from a Black Hawk helicopter. But you know, early on in the you know IEDs, improvised explosive devices, they are commonplace. I mean, that's part of our regular vernacular in the news now. But then that was really relatively new. 
On the lower left-hand side of this corner, you can see a few guys, and there's a big blank part on the road. And, I, and actually, this was an improvised explosive device that was buried in the bridge, and um, all the traffic was backed up from this. And it just happened to be when I was flying one of my missions. Wow. So, and, and I, know you, I know you keep saying they're brave, and, and they are brave. I'm very thankful that, that we have people oh, yeah. who do that. But at the same time, it takes someone extremely brave to do that because we'd never see what they did without somebody like you. Yeah. So. What a suck up. Anyway, <laughs> hey, it's time, <laughs> it's time for a break. What was the joke for the break? Uh, Breakfast. Breakfast. Is the, Breakfast. Do, you know, you could have done Danger, There's a Breakdown, Dead Ahead, Boss Gag song, no? I'm sorry, you lost me. Break it, was, it down with the electric boogaloo. Was that when they were writing lyrics with chisel and a tablet? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm losing IQ points as I sit here. <laughs> I'm going to take a short break because these two will probably continue on. Uh, when we come back, we're going to have some giveaways, a little bit more with Stacy before we go. But uh, stick around. You're live here on The Grid, a certainly interesting show. Thanks to Matt. <laughs> Hello, I'm Bill Fortney, and welcome to Olympic National Park. Olympic National Park is made up of a number of different landforms, all the way from a beautiful sea coast to high mountains, glacial snow, the wonderful whole rainforest and the rest of these old growth forests, and it all leads to great nature photography. And we're here to learn landscape photography and the techniques of landscape photography, but we're gonna do a lot more than just landscape. We're gonna do close-ups, we're gonna do water photography, we're gonna do high altitude sunrise and sunset work, we have a lot to do. So please come check out my class in Olympic National Park only on kelbytraining.com. Hey, we're back. Scott Kelby here with Matt Koskowski, retired Staff Sergeant, Stacy Pearson. And um, just want to mention tomorrow, Joe McNally, I believe, is in San Jose, California. Yes. His tour, so he hasn't done one of his tours for us since last October, but he's starting up a whole bunch of legs. And so uh, he starts, I think, tomorrow in San Jose. Then he's to Seattle and somewhere else. Well, can so I, can where I just can say we find that, out? that Joe, I love him <coughs> to death. Like he's, he's magic, isn't he's, he? He was one of my mentors in the military. Like He always gave back to the military. Yeah. But if you get a chance to go see him, bah, don't miss it. Oh, yeah. A couple little comments here real quickly. Uh, this is from Rich in Florida, or just Rich FL, <laughs> could be. <clears throat> from a kindred Air Force retired veteran, knowing all you do now and what you did as a combat photographer, would you do it again? No doubt, yes. Yeah, I can yeah. tell. I, I can answer have that one for you, Rich. Yeah, you I didn't can, need you, to hear. I'm not kidding. <clears throat> you can see it in your eyes when you're talking about it. You're like, yeah. if I could go today, I would be yeah. out there, you know. Hey, Rich, thank you for your service, by the way. Uh, Stacy, uh, this is from Miles. Miles says, Stacy, I have such a high level of respect for the work that you did in the military. I appreciate the level of proficiency you operated at doing what you loved. Thank you for your service. Bye, Miles. Very oh. well, well said, Miles. Thanks, Miles. All right, we're going to take a break for just a moment. We're not going to go to a commercial because <laughs> as much as we'd like to, we're going to do some giveaways. Hooray. Matt, tell them. All right, you're going to win a copy of Stacy's book, A Photojournalist Field Guide. Or, or shooter. Let's see if they go to the close-up. Go to the close-up. The there you go. Oh, it's just a, it's a little soft. But right there with my finger. Is like, <laughs> right there. That's her. Okay. All right. And uh, also, uh, or possibly a pass to Photoshop World. So all you got to do is go full to pass. Full Conference Pass. You go to kelby1.com slash webcast slash contest. I think you can actually just go to contest. And uh, click on the grid, add your name. The most important thing there, just put a comment on what you want to win. Yeah, you need to let us know which one. If you want to win the book, if you want to win. And we're also going to give away, what the heck, let's give away a ticket to Joe's seminar, either tomorrow in San Jose, which means you have to move fast, or in Seattle's next, and after that oh we're gonna see where he's at next because he gets around uh san jose and seattle but i think he's someplace else can you click up top can you zoom up a little bit nope and if you click on that's not just that's... there you go there and go to joe's tour of love one flash two flash all the way at the bottom it's really one flash and then he pulls out a second flash just for a little bit mm. all right upcoming tour dates a little further boom he's in san jose seattle then in july he's in 
Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Milwaukee. Milwaukee, which is in uh, Hawaii. And then uh, Boston, uh, also in July. So if you have never seen Joe live, he, he is magic. He is I mean, awesome. He is just, he's an incredible teacher. You will laugh your butt <laughs> off and you will just learn a ton. He's, he's just a really great, just great trainer and just a great person just all the way around. So I hope you get the chance to catch him. Well, his him. wife's pretty amazing too, Annie Annie. Oh, Annie. You know what? Annie is the person that, that taught me how to use an off-camera flash. Oh. I had never used an off-camera flash until Annie literally showed me how it was done. I was like, that's so cool. <laughs> that that was, it, was, it was. It was a very, it was like a, a light bulb right. moment. And we find out more about you on your website. Yeah. You on yeah. Twitter? I do tweet. Do you Stacey tweet? Stacey Pearsall. Just pretty simple. Very and simple. your voiceovers for Disney are done where? Oh, everywhere. <laughs> uh, in the shower, in the car, pretty much in inopportune times. Come on, let's hear one. Let's hear one. Oh, which, okay. Well, we got a... Uh, what do you want? Uh, I, I haven't know. heard these yet, so I, oh. I would not. Elsa. Oh. Elsa. You gotta have a little bit of frozen action. Well, I don't. I've not seen that. Uh, oh, it's very I'm good. Sorry. It's very good. A whole new world. <laughs> there we Shining go. Shining place I never knew. Dang. I I know, way dude. <laughs> up here, it's crystal clear. She's now so I'm in dude. a whole new world. And she can talk to you with the you. voice and everything. <laughs> It's not a duet. And Pete is not. Pete is not good at this. Not <laughs> wow. Actually, Pete does it pretty well, too. Oh, you know what I hate more than anything? Super multi-talented people. She does it. Did you hear her oh, Raja thing? No. Do, no. Do I, I can't do it on demand. So okay, like, we'll talk. We'll talk. Here we uh, go. Uh, so uh, what, what's the thing? Oh, what? Oh, say that again. Huh? Oh, Raja. <laughs> She's doing this at lunch. Yes. In this high place at lunch. Like. Uh, that's the best place to do it. Anyway, thank you very funny. much, Stacey. Thank you for your service to our country. My pleasure. Uh, thank you for sharing all your stuff with us. We're very excited. To have, I, can't, I can't wait to watch your whole interview. Yeah. I saw five minutes of it. We were all in tears. So uh, it, it's going to be fantastic. And also, uh, hats off to Mia McCormick for coming up with this for this series. Yeah, this and series. Mia, Mia's so good. And as she you rocks. Know, yeah. she, was, she, she rocks and rolls it. Anyway, Pete, you were in Brad's place today. You were absolutely, and I mean this from the heart, not that good. But <laughs> mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. Average but to marginal. But Brad, if you're listening, you, were, yeah, you set the bar pretty low. So it only goes lower from there, right? I know, you know. Hey, have you seen Brad's beard? Brad grew this full beard out of nowhere. He's like, boom. <laughs> like, I went away for 12 days and I came back as like Grizzly Adams. <laughs> It's got its own ecosystem and stuff. Like, he'll be sitting there and he'll pull the fry out. Oh, fry. I mean, he's like. <laughs> cha 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 No, but, he didn't go ZZ Top on it, but he's, it's, no, he's but getting he, there. Somebody asked yesterday. I put a picture of him up on my on my Facebook page. It's uh, facebook.com slash skelby. So it looks like Skelby. And I put a picture up right up there and people are saying, is he Amish? <laughs> it's just it's just, a, it's just so weird because Brad's got a baby face. But can I tell you something? I'm gonna I'm gonna reveal something about Brad that is gonna freak you out. Probably won't freak you out. You know Brad pretty well. Oh yes. Brad's gonna be 30 in a couple of months. Really? <gasps> Seriously, how did he get to be 30? I hired him when he was 12. He's 20. He was 23, 23 or 24 when he started he's, here. He's gonna be 30. I can't believe it. He's wow. like. Well, happy he's, birthday, Brad. He's gonna want to leave the nest and get a driver's license and stuff. <laughs> I'm very. Now upset. you can finally drink. Legally. Oh, he's been. Oh, legally. Good point. Anyway, thank you again, Stacey, for being on the show. And uh, make sure you go check out Stacey's work. Go check out her books. And uh, Matt Kleskowski, where can people learn more about you as if know. they would want to? I have no idea. MattK.com is where Matt's uh, blog is. And you can get his Back. Facebook and Twitter and all that from there. It's all right there. And you are at scottkelby.com? Yeah, sure. Still? <laughs> Still. Yeah, they haven't taken it <laughs> Nobody's bought that up from you yet? <laughs> no, they keep, keep getting offers like $50, $60. I'm waiting until they get to about 75 <laughs> And you'll go. Anyway, hey, also, um, for those of you who have been following me on Facebook this week, uh, I got a lot of people that said, hey, uh, you're going to Nashville. You got to go to this guitar center. And I went there just to shop around. And, of course, I bought a guitar, found a used guitar, great price. It arrived today. So I just put the pictures up on Facebook. Facebook.com slash S. Kelby. My new red Telecaster. Candy apple red with a white pick guard. Beautiful. Feel the love. If it's not white, I don't want to see it. It's got a white pick guard. There we go. I now just picked up my new I'll rock my, band. I'll wear my, wa you can wear my watch when you play it. All right. All right, everybody. Take care. Thanks to all of our sponsors. We'll see you next week right here on The Grid. Take care, everybody.